There are some memory principles we should be aware of. One of them we already know, just instinctively, is repetition. We know that if we, like if you stared at this page long enough, you would memorize the table of contents, right? Or if you repeated it over and over again, or if you wrote it down a bunch of times, all of that is sheer repetition. Sometimes they call that rote memorization. You ever hear that term? Rote memorization is when you just kind of like, it's like brainwashing yourself. Like you just do an extreme amount of repetition and it's gonna get stuck in your head if you do that. But there are other ways. So one thing is called visualization. So visualization is just your mind's ability to visualize something that isn't quite right there in front of you. Like if I asked you to visualize a member of your family or a good friend of yours, you could think about what that person looks like. You can visualize him or her without them being right there in front of you. So they sometimes refer to this as the mind's eye. It's just, that's why I have this creepy image of a brain with an eyeball on it. Uh, but your mind's eye is just your ability to see something. If I say, uh, picture a cup of coffee, we could think about what that might actually look like in our head. So visual information. It's part of the reason why we forget names. This ever happened to you? Yeah. You meet someone and you're just immediately gone. By the way, my name's Paul. Uh, <laughs> introduced myself earlier. If you forgot my name, it happens. I forget names, it happens. Everybody has done that. Uh, but isn't it true that you're more likely to remember someone's face? Yeah. Right? It's easier to remember a face than a name. That's because a face is visual information. A name, that's just a collection of letters that equals a word, equals a name. Abstract information is a little harder to remember. So we need to find ways to convert visual, verbal or numerical or basically abstract information. We need to convert it in ways to visual. That's part of what we're going to be talking about today. Now, this is why companies will have visual things associated to their brand, right? Like McDonald's has their golden arches, and there's probably a number of other visuals you can associate to McDonald's rather than just the word McDonald's. Um, your visual recall is much better than your verbal recall. So what else influences your memory? Let's think about your short-term memory. Like um, how many, let's say I show you these 10 digits here. Now, if you look at it long enough, you'll memorize it. You know, three, zero, five, nine, zero, five, six, three, zero, seven, okay. Got it? Maybe not, maybe yes, maybe no. But I mean, if you, if you repeat it enough, you would get it, uh, 10 digits, is a little bit of information overload for your brain. You can get it with enough repetition, though. Um, this reminds me of something called Miller's magic number. That number is seven, okay? So let me explain what I mean by this. It has to do with short-term memory. Phone numbers, you ever wonder why phone numbers are seven digits without the area code? It's actually based on like the, uh, some of the research George Miller was doing in uh, the 40s. In uh, 1952, he wrote a paper called uh, the magic number seven, plus or minus two, has to do with this graph right here. So Miller's magic number states that we could remember about seven things, plus or minus two, because there's variance among individuals. It also depends on what we're trying to remember. Are we talking about numbers here, words, the meaning of words, faces, names, things like that. But it's the reason why if you were going to the grocery store and you gotta get a bunch of things, you write it down, right? But if you only have to get two things, you don't write it down. What is the point where you decide I better write this down. How many, how many items? For most people, it starts like eh, around four or five, five or six, but if I just had to get bread, milk, tomatoes, I can handle that short-term memory-wise. Once I start getting to like five or six, you see where this number, this graph starts dropping off? That's where most people are like, I better write this down or I'm gonna forget. Um, or you go to the store without a grocery list and then you end up buying way more than you really need to. So here's another number. Which one's easier, the top or bottom, to memorize? The bottom one, right? Um, why is the bottom one easier? It looks like a phone number and it's broken up into parts. Uh, also, if you look long enough, you'll see these numbers are exactly the same, right? But our, doesn't our mind perceive the top one as like, whoa, that looks like way too, that look, I can get it, but I gotta like, maybe write it down or repeat it. The bottom one is like, oh, that's a little more manageable. And it's because of something called chunking there's multiple words for it, chunking, grouping, categorizing, clustering, um, but it's how we learn to spell the word Wednesday, right? We would, or I remember when I was spelling the word Wednesday, I would break it down like Wednesday to remember the spelling. Um, now, 
the other thing going on here is something called association. So association is really how we learn. We associate one piece of information to something else. It's also how a lot of learning happens even after you get out of school if you start practicing in your field. Um, I studied finance and I worked in the futures and options trading industry. But the moment I got out of school, that you know, finance degree and the learning just started exponentially increasing because now you're in your field and you're actually you know, you're going beyond just books. You're still reading books, but association, this is associated to a phone number. This is also associated based on the area code, right? So it reminds me of something called the Baker-Baker effect. So the Baker-Baker effect is this uh, psychological study they've replicated many times, and it always has the same results. Basically, it comes down to this. Someone gets introduced, not someone, they take a group of people, they introduce all of them to Mr. Baker, okay? They want to see how many people are going to remember his name. So they don't tell the group that's the point of the study, right? Because that would skew the results. They tell them the study's about something else, and at some point during the study, they get introduced to Mr. Baker, and they bring the group back later, and they ask them each individually, do you remember his name? Most people forget. It's usually like around 90%. That's not interesting, because people forget names all the time. What's interesting is group number two. The second group is introduced to the exact same guy, but they're told he's a baker. A little different, right? Same word. But guess what happens here? Everybody remembers his occupation. It's usually around like 90%. And they call this the Baker-Baker effect because in one case, it's hard to remember. In another case, it's easy to remember. But it's the same word. Um, by the way, sometimes this is called, incorrectly called the Baker-Baker paradox. It's not a paradox. They know what's going on. It has everything to do with association. You already have associations that are built into the occupation of a baker, right? You might picture a baker a certain way, like this with a top hat maybe, or an apron. You might think of bread, cakes, lots of associations for a baker, just like a lot of other professions. So this kind of shows how association works, but there's one more thing that has a very, very deep impact on your ability to remember, and that is the fact that you remember things that are weird. Anything that is strange, ridiculous, out of the ordinary is more memorable. Uh, that's why commercials, when you watch commercials, why do they go through such effort to come up with like something that's outrageous, ridiculous? They could just be like, hello, my name's Paul and I'm with, so -and -so, with Geico Insurance and uh, here's the phone number, you can save yourself a lot of money. Why don't we just give them the facts? Instead, we have a talking gecko with, uh, what is that, an Australian accent or British? Or yeah, and uh, think about it. Somebody in a marketing meeting had to decide, okay, the talking gecko, what kind of accent? And they could have taken a New York accent, a Boston accent, a California accent. A I'm from Chicago. They could have taken a Chicago accent. I don't know. They instead chose that. Maybe because to an American audience, it's a little bit different, right? Maybe you don't encounter that accent on a day-to-day -day basis. So, and of course, McDonald's, good example. Why use a clown? to help sell hamburgers. Somebody had this idea in a marketing meeting, right? And some executive was like, that's just crazy enough that it might work, right? Remember uh, when you'd go to the movie theaters, you'd see those commercials of Coca-Cola with the polar bears drinking Coca-Cola? What's going on there? I mean, they're trying to create an association. Hey, you should be drinking some Coke right now with your popcorn. And I mean, maybe this is why these polar bears are endangered. That, you know, they're <laughs> drinking too much Coke, clearly. So, Anywho, the idea that you remember things that are strange is very, very important. We're going to use these principles to help us store the information. Mm -hmm.